So here's the goal for today. I want to play every Martin ever made. I don't know if that's possible, but we'll see. Shoot. <laughs> what guitar is that? This is the Clapton model. It makes me feel like Clapton. I, I feel like Eric Clapton if Eric Clapton was like, not as good at guitar. <laughs> like the D45 it's like 10 G's it's like so unbelievable it can't like you can't fathom it <laughs> That's just like, it's just really, it's got that nice low end, you know what I mean? You look so reflective. What guitar is this? The OMJM, which is just, yeah. I played it for the first time at my friend Gabby's house, like probably eight or nine years ago when I was like first, first learning how to play guitar and it immediately became like my dream axe. <laughs> That's how you take it back to 2001 when I was 17. <laughs> See, now I'm emulating your son. I'm just saying weirdo all the yeah. time. We got a D18 here. That's my lead line in every song I've ever written. And then the, the, the verse is always... Chorus always goes. All right, Brooke from Hillsong. I'm actually kind of shocked. Like I would expect their their guitars to be like very much for a live setting, but this is very much a studio like acoustic, which I don't know. I, I dig this. I dig this a lot. Brooke, you killed it. Play it again, but flip the pick so you can compare the difference oh, yeah, when yeah. you're listening. <laughs> Literally sounds like a different guitar. Mm. It sounds infinitely better. Mm. Do you do that on all your recordings? Oh, you see, whenever I play like the mahogany ones, this is when I know like I'm a city in color fan. Dallas Green is unbelievable. On his early recordings, you can hear that he's just going like DI with an acoustic and a vocal, and it's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard in my life. You sure about that? Okay. I used to play city in color a lot at like college coffee houses where I was like trying to impress a girl and then I just wouldn't impress her at all. So there was a, when I first started learning guitar, there was this cat named Greg and he was, uh, shout out Greg Molina. He was the resident John Mayer fan on our hall in college. And he taught me a couple of things and he used to play this guitar. After, before I even wanted the OMJM, this was the one that I saw. CEO9, because I am a CEO of nobody. 
I'm gonna try and play the one Tim Henson riff I, I know, other than the one that I learned. Oh, it, it can be better. Yeah, that was that was appropriately bad. <laughs> Here's the chord progression that every neo soul and Instagram player has used for the past like two years. See, this is the one with the cutaway, so this should be like the. See, this is like this is like what I don't get all the time. The mayors, everybody who plays Martins, and they all have these riffs where they just go like they don't play cutaways. But for me, being like an electric player, I almost need one if I'm really like That guitar sounded pretty cool. Dude, that's why I love it. No, this is the one I have to do the Tim Henson riff on. Oh my gosh. No, that's not even at the right fret. Oh my gosh. Wait, where's 12? Three, five, seven, nine, twelve. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the only other Tim Henson riff I know, and it's really, it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> if this video could just be every guitar you pick up, just a montage of you screwing something up, it would be so funny. It's just more of a finger-picked kind of thing. I think you could do it, but it, it would it would have to be less of the strummy, strummy kind of stuff. You see, if we're if we're really gonna do this, I'm gonna need to have it in my over my left leg. I've never taken formal guitar lessons for more than like, I took like one, I took like two lessons once as a gift from my parents. But when I was in college, when I was first learning, like a year in, there was a guitar class taught by a guitar teacher at my college. Super nice guy. He was like. 80, 85 years old at the time, and he would always get on me for being like the Hendrix fan, and he would be like, you can't have your thumb wrapped over. So all we would do is this, and he would teach me like Stairway to Heaven, and then he would give me the sheet music, and then after he would give me the sheet music, I would learn it from like Marty, and I would come in, and he would be like, that's clearly not what I... <laughs> See, I'm already doing it. Oh, there you go. That's how you play the nylon like that. that feels Dude, good. I told you. I and that sounds good. I cannot play without a pick. Crazy. Oh, did you just pick up the nylon? Yeah. <laughs> this isn't what you would play on nylon. You play something like this. I feel like when you have a nylon string, every chord has to have a number. Like you can't you can't play a G on a nylon string. You have to play a G7 on a nylon string. Dude, you didn't play the bass. I uh what what is a bass? I thought this was just a guitar with four strings. It's a really big uke. Oh, it's a really big ukulele. It's tuned differently though. Uh you cannot do that. Yeah. The bass sounds amazing, that pick sounds terrible. Fine, fine, you know what? No, I, I think if you play the, the edge of the pick, it'd be...
That feels weird to me. Play a D. I think that's like F. A D is a G, I think. You know how there's like that one character in every movie who's like walking around with a uke? Like the indie movie. I'm, I swear this guitar smells like cinnamon. Just like cinnamon buns. I don't even want to play it. I just want to smell it. Parlor guitars just make me want to like sit in New York, you know? In like some kind of like cafe wearing like a fedora and just being like, my name is Mike. <laughs> So there's this YouTuber and his name is Gabe Von Doc and he plays all these seventh chords and ninth chords. And he uses one of these. I remember he talked about the Dreadnought Junior and that was the first time I had really heard of it because I was like, holy crap, one of my favorite YouTubers used one of these. So let's get down to brass, brass tacks. I think we found out very quickly that it would be completely impossible to play every Martin ever made in a single day, but I think we gave it a good old college try. And it was one of those really cool things when you think about Martin guitars, right? You think about the Dreadnought thing, you think about their classic models, but even in that room to be able to see like the nylons, the ukuleles, the basses, like all of the different things that I didn't necessarily associate with Martin guitars and just seeing like what they're doing in different ranges. And I think even like to a smaller extent, just coming from being an electric player, looking at all those acoustics, it was cool to see the interesting ways that they were trying to like vary it up from just like the iconic Dreadnought models, especially when you got to like what I alluded to very quickly in the video, which was the SC-13E. A model like this bad boy right here, where you have like the classic bassy Martin thing that I could see in a mix. <laughs> but also something where you have that like high fret accessibility and a cutaway, which is something that, like I said, with all of the Dreadnought models, like the D45 and the D18 that you're used to talking about, the cutaway is not something that you necessarily associate with Martin, but it's cool to see the differences in a guitar like this, especially being someone who like a lot of the Martin players that I've listened to before, like the Claptons who will play like Layla Acoustic on an OM model and just be reaching, which is cool and I like, but it's cool to be able to see an SC model like this that has that access for those high frets. But yeah, Martin Guitars. Tell me if you own a Martin Slash, which one is your dream one to own? Is it the D45, is it the D18, is it the new SC13? Is it anything that I might have not shown in the video? All that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you to Martin Guitars for just innovating things or for just keeping it real for almost 200 years, which is kind of crazy. If you wanna know anything more about the SC13 or any of the other guitars that I showed in this video, they're all available at Sweetwater. The link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. It's one of the best ways to support the channel if that's something you're interested in. Or if you're just curious about any of those cool Martins, make sure to check out the links below. Thank you to my cameramen, Daniel Hunter, Andrew Masters. Both their channels are linked in the description as well. Both some of the best musicians I know. Like and subscribe if you had a good time. And most importantly, like most important of all, have a fantastic day.